So, I've just been tagged by Granny Panties 30 and I'm supposed to give five random facts about myself. So, let's get started. So, I just thought I'd give you a little sneak preview of some of the things we're going to visit in the five facts. Fred Siegel, Top Chef, Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, Untouchables, Secret Agent, and The Reluctant Princess. Sneak preview. Number one. <laughs> Anyway, I have been an environmental activist all my life, and in 1991, I had the incredible opportunity, uh, along with my former mate, Fred Siegel, and his wonderful son, Michael, the three of us, created the world's very first environmental department store. And it was way ahead of its time. It was incredibly, uh, well, it was a labor of love. I loved the environment, I loved Fred, and it was just an amazing experience to take that passion for the environment and the passion I had for him and you know co-create something that was so magical and we had environmental architects and we had retailers from all over the world that brought in everything from organic cotton to uh, recycled jeans and they recycled tires and made bags out of them and it was just really wonderful to have something like that in the heart of um, the Los Angeles area and to be the first to do something like that, you know, take your passion and make it happen, and we did. Number two, I love cooking, especially with extra virgin olive oil. And you can hear more about that if you want to check the link over on the side. With channel review, I just did a, a, a really fun little mini movie co-starring an animated Sean Connery about my love for extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> Anyway, I love cooking, and when I was a kid, I used to watch all the Galloping Gourmet shows, and when I grew up and I became a producer, I remember when I moved from Northern California down to Southern California, and I couldn't find um, a production company I'd really like to work with, and I got this crazy idea that maybe I could make a living uh, cooking, even though I'd never done that. And within two weeks, I found myself living in this beautiful mansion in Bel Air, and I was working for this couple doing, you know, doing gourmet meals and getting paid. And about six months into the job, I was supposed to do this whole meal with the great chefs of Europe on this list. And I, I asked um, the woman I was working with, I said, uh, for, I said, um, wow, how come I'm, you know, cooking for the great chefs of Europe? She said, well, you know, I told you, Bill was the former president of the ARA, you know, when I hired you. And I said, what? And I thought, you know, ARA, you know, some subversive Irish group or something. And she goes, yeah, the American Restaurant Association. Bill was Restaurant Man of the Year, three years in a row. And I thought, oh, my God, I would never have taken this job if I'd known that. He would have found out I was a fake early on. <laughs> but anyway, I made up on my own meals, and nobody could, you know, uh, tell me I was doing it wrong. And, you know, big movie stars and big directors and people from all around the world were trying to steal me away. So I figured, hey, it's time to start my own production company if I'm that much in demand. Number three, I was a secret agent working under an assumed name for over three years. Or something like that. <laughs> anyway, I became in demand as this top chef in Hollywood and people like Steven Spielberg and George Lucas and others tried to steal me away. And I prayed and I meditated because I was really confused. God, what do you want me to do? What direction do you want me to go in? And I got this strange, these strange messages to, first of all, cut my dark hair and go blonde and rechristen myself using my confirmation name, Christina, and use the name Ford, which is the most recognizable na American name all over the planet. And I became Christina Ford. And I reached out to um, through the Hollywood Reporter, and I invited... Uh, directors and writers and financiers to the Barrymore Mansion every month for a large business soiree hosted by me, moi, <laughs> the new and improved Christina Ford. So here I was hosting these parties, cold calling people out of the trades, and um, completely terrified. But I was I was living behind, or you know, I was working from a persona. So I figured, well, you know, uh, Sharon Fox is not failing if she, you know, she can't. You know, it'll be Christina Ford that's failing. So if I fall flat on my face, it'll be all Christina Ford's fault, and Sharon will not be blamed at all. And I was a stutter and prone to panic attacks when I was growing up. So this was a very terrifying mission that God gave me. Very sneaky. Anyway, um, the amazing thing is, I you know, for three years traveled around the world to the film, you know Cannes Film Festival, put co-productions together, put writers together with the money people, and it was just so exciting and so amazing, and it was exciting to be Christina Ford, 
and the amazing thing is uh, Christina Ford succeeded. So Sharon Fox and Christina Ford were, were safe, no egg on the face or anything like that. The problem is I succeeded so well, it was really important to go back to being Sharon Fox just to protect myself. <laughs> So anyway, there are still people who, you know, when I get on the phone and talk to my friends around the world and business associates, they uh, refer to me as Christina Ford, but um, I really like being Sharon Fox. Number four, when I was growing up, all through my grammar school days, I was the untouchable. I was the neighborhood untouchable. I was a little kid that all the mothers said, you know, don't let your little kids, don't let your little girls play with Sharon, you know, she's going to get them into the creek and they're going to get dirty and their pretty little dress is going to get dirty and they're going to fall down and hurt themselves and yada, 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 yada. And here I am catching pollywogs and I'm just having fun and getting dirty and I'm swinging on vines and, you know, panning for gold up at our ranch and, you know, digging for arrowheads and, you know, oh, there's a rattlesnake. Oh, I think I'll catch it. <laughs> you know, I was an adventurer. And, you know, in, and in one year, when, when I was a teen, I was like 13 years old, I was going to all the city council meetings, I had a volunteer job at the Steinherd Aquarium in Golden Gate Park, I fed the sharks and the porpoises, uh, I made my first, you know, 45-minute documentary film, I worked with Barbara Boxer to save a marsh before she even ran for any office, and these women turned around and one of them even offered me money to take their daughter to lunch. It's a woman who wouldn't let me play with her her pretty little pink bow daughter because I was going to get her dirty and now her daughter was overweight sitting on a couch doing nothing and I thought you know let your kids go out and adventure and also be nice to the neighborhood kids I cannot tell you how many nights I went to sleep crying because I was so alone and because nobody wanted to play with me so I'm darn glad Tishla tagged me <laughs> like she wants to play with me oh my god number five when that dirty little kid grew up, the only person that I've ever been engaged to was a prince. <laughs> In fact, the last person I had a date with was a prince. It was a different one. And believe you me, I don't go around looking for these princes. <laughs> believe you me. But anyway, we went to the Marin County Fair and this particular prince uh, grew up on a farm. And so we went to the place where all the pigs and all the cows and all the animals were and we were practicing animal calls. So we're like walking around and we're going, ur, 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 meh, moo. <laughs> and there weren't any frogs there, but we practiced our frog calls. Ur, 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 ur. <laughs> so I was doing the frog calls with the prince and the mayor walked by and I'm like, oops. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That was so much fun. <laughs> Tishala, you are so sweet. Thank you for tagging me. I don't feel like an untouchable anymore. Now it's my turn to choose five others to play along. So you can take a look at them on the side here and find a little bit more information about them and play along with us. So anyway, thank you so much and tag, you're it.